Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Family Storytime at the Onondaga Free Library. My name is Miss Corey, and we're not actually doing story times at the library yet, but we will be presenting these videos periodically so you can stay in touch. We're going to have lots of fun today in story time, so grown-ups, I hope you will stick around, because today we are going to model for you the five practices that you can do with your child any day, every day, anytime, just about anywhere, to help get your child ready to read and ready to learn. And those five practices are very easy to remember. They're simply reading, writing, singing, talking, and playing. And if you do these with your child on a daily basis, they will have all the skills they need, called the early literacy skills, when it comes time to go to school and to read. So again, those are reading, writing, singing, talking, and playing. And we're going to start story time today with a song about these five practices. The song usually goes like this. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. But today, we're going to sing, the more we read together, the smarter we'll be. And we can do all the hand motions. You can do the hand motions as you sing along. So for reading, your hand becomes the book. And then you just take your two fingers and you take them down the page. When you want to do the sign language for writing, your hand lays flat to be the paper, and you take your pencil in your hand and you write. Writing. When we want to sing, we're going to rock the cradle. So we're going to have one hand like this, and the other hand is going to rock. Sing. Talking. For talking, we simply open up our hand, touch our index finger to our chin twice. Talking. And playing. This is my favorite, but it's also one of the harder ones. You want to hold your hands up, spread your fingers and thumbs out, close your fists, keep your thumbs out, and then raise those pinkies up. And then we just wiggle them, and that is playing. And as we do these things, the more we do them together, the smarter you'll be. So let's sing our song. Are you ready? The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the smarter we'll be. Cause I read and you read and they read and we all read. The more we read together, the smarter we'll be. The more we write together, 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 the more we write together, the smarter we'll be. Cause I write and you'll write and they write and we all write. The more we write together, the smarter we'll be. The more we sing together, 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 the more we sing together, the smarter we'll be. Cause I sing and you sing and they sing and we all sing. The more we sing together, the smarter we'll be. The more we talk together, 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 the more we talk together, the smarter we'll be. Cause I talk and you talk and they talk, we all talk. The more we talk together, the smarter we'll be. And last, the more we play together, 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 the more we play together, the smarter we'll be. Cause I play and you play and they play and we all play. The more we play together, the smarter we'll be. Good job, everybody. So remember to read, write, sing, talk, and play every day. You'll get smart. Next, we're going to have story time all about 
one of my favorite places. And this is a place where a lot of animals live. So can you think about a place where a lot of animals live? Mm. Farm. The farm is a really, really good answer. And there are a lot of animals that live on a farm, right? We have goats and cows and pigs and horses and dogs and cats and ducks and chickens. And they all live on the farm. But we're not going to do story time about the farm today. We're going to do story time about another place where a lot of animals live. The forest. Oh, that's another really good answer. Really, really good answer. And we have a lot of really great animals that live in the forest around here, don't we? So we have skunks, and we have deer, and we have foxes, and we have wolves, and we have all kinds of birds and animals that live in our forests. That's a really good answer but story time is not going to be about animals that live in the forest today. Can you think of another place where animals live? That's right, animals that live in the zoo. Take a minute and think about it. What kind of animals live at the zoo? Have you been to the, the zoo? What kind of animals have you seen at the zoo? What we're gonna do now is we are gonna take a little trip and we're gonna visit my friend Lou at the zoo, and he's going to tell you some riddles and see if you can figure out who these animals are. We'll be right back with Lou at the zoo. Hello, everybody. My name is Lou, and I live at the zoo. And I feed all the animals that what I do. I feed every animal. Can you guess who? Let's see. I'll give you a clue. This animal is big and gray, and their trunks swing and sway. What kind of animal are they? That's right. They're the elephant. Our next animal, well, bananas are their favorite things, and they like to chatter, and they like to swing. What do you think they are? That's right. It's the monkey. Eat, 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 eat. And next animal has a neck. That's really long. Long, long. What? You think it's a turtle? No, you are wrong, wrong, wrong. It's the giraffe who has a really long neck so he can reach the tender leaves. This animal is kind of like a horse, except it has black and white stripes. Of course. What animal is it? Did you guess a zebra? That's right. A zebra is a lot like a horse, except for his black and white stripes. Of course. And did you know that a horse says nay? But a zebra brays. That's right. Next animal is a kind of cat. But it has a big fluffy mane. And it roars. Rawr, like that. Can you guess what animal it is? It's the lion. And he has a terrible... This next animal is big and it's white and it likes to eat fish, but an occasional seal is its favorite dish. What animal is it? That's right. It is the polar bear. 
and he lives way up north where it's cold and icy. We have two more animals. Let's see if you can guess who these are. This one hisses and slithers, and he likes to eat mice. Some are scary, and some are nice. What kind of animal is this? Did you guess a snake? <sighs> Some snakes in the wild we have to be very careful of because they can be poisonous and bite us. But we also have some snakes that we have as pets that are very friendly. And our last animal today, oh, this animal is long and lean and they swim and they slide and in the swampy water is where they like to hide. What animal is it? That's right. It's the alligator. And you want to be very careful of the alligator because he has a great big mouth and great big teeth to bite. My name is Lou, and we visited the zoo, and you helped me feed the animals, because that's what I do. But now I'm tired, and I'm a little hungry too. So I will eat, and then I'll sleep, and maybe you should too. Thank you. For grown-ups, talking about concrete things and concrete items and objects with your child, such as animals, gives them an opportunity to talk about everyday things and to learn more about them. And books about animals are especially helpful because they help children to make strong connections between themselves and the animals that they like, but also themselves and the books that they would like to explore further. Today, we're not going to actually read any books, but I'm going to show you a couple that I really, really enjoy and that I would recommend to you. All About Animals. It's one of my favorite series. This is a series of books by Bill Martin Jr., illustrated by Eric Carl, and you're probably familiar with a lot of these. But what's really great about these books is there's at least four different versions talking about all different kinds of animals, and they come in board books. So if your child wants to take a bite out of it, your baby, you don't have to worry about it too much. But they also come in larger picture book format for your older children. And the four that I have that I want to introduce to you today are Brown Bear, Brown Bear, which is all about farm animals and animals on the farm. And it also introduces colors. Very simple, very easy, very much loved by children. When you're done with Brown Bear, Brown Bear, you can move on to Baby Bear, Baby Bear. Again, comes in the board book, but also in picture book format. And Baby Bear, Baby Bear explores all kinds of animals that live in the forest. Animals that they may see in their everyday lives, especially if they live here in central or upstate New York. Another one, same by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carl. Again, comes in the board book, but also in the big picture book size. And this one is Panda Bear, Panda Bear. And in Panda Bear, Panda Bear, you will explore some very unique animals that live in the wild all over the world. And one that we're going to talk about today, and I'm going to actually tell, I'm not going to read the story, but we're going to tell, is Polar Bear, Polar Bear. And Polar Bear, Polar Bear is where you can explore all the different animals that we're going to talk about today. And those are animals that live at the zoo. So we're going to next move on and I'm going to tell you, we're going to tell the story of Polar Bear, Polar Bear, 
piece of the flannel board. So this is the story of Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? And in this story, we're going to learn about all different kinds of animals that live at the zoo, and we're going to learn about the sounds that they make. So as we're showing each of the animals, think about what kind of sounds do these animals make? Have you ever heard these sounds before? Here we go. And of course, we start out with the polar bear. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear a... What is it? That's right, it's a lion. I hear a lion roaring in my ear. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippo snorting in my ear. Hippo, hippo, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. Flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a cobra hissing in my ear. Cobra, cobra, what do you hear? I hear a jaguar growling in my ear. Jaguar, jaguar, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus barking in my ear. Zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear all the animals, but what I really like to hear is all the children making the animal sounds. So I like to hear children who growl like a polar bear and roar like a lion, snort like a hippo, fluting like a flamingo, Braying like a zebra, snarling like a leopard, yelping like a peacock, and bellowing like a walrus. And that's what I hear. So these are all different kinds of animals at the zoo. And I don't know what all of these animals actually sound like, so I needed to go to the zoo, and my zoo didn't have some of these animals. So what we're going to do next is we're going to talk about and listen to the sounds that these animals make. The first sound that we'll have is the sound of the polar bear. Are you ready? The next sound is the lion. Then we have the hippo who snorts. A fluting flamingo. A braying zebra. A hissing Cobra, a snarling leopard, a yelping peacock, and a barking walrus.
And those are the sounds that those animals make. Great job, everybody. And stories like Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and Polar Bear, Polar Bear are great books to share with your children. But don't forget about those nonfiction books or the books of facts, especially when it comes to animals. There are some absolutely beautiful books available at your library about all different kinds of animals. And um, your children will love to explore these books. A couple of my favorites, my number one favorite, is Zoo by Gail Gibbons. This is a little wordy, but it does talk about all the things that go on behind the scene at the zoo. And it might pique your child's curiosity. Another one that I really, really love, it's considered a picture book, but it could also be a nonfiction book. It's called Bruno Maneri's Zoo. And what I really like about this book is the illustrations. It just has absolutely beautiful illustrations that are very accessible to children. It explores many zoo animals with a little rhyme of information about each one. So again, remember to share those nonfiction books with your child. They're easy because they're not a whole story. You can just pick them up and open to a page and share a page of particular interest. So we're going to end story time today with a little song. And we're going to ask you to get up and maybe move just a little bit and get those wiggles out. We've been sitting for a long time. So the song that we're going to do now is, if you're happy and you know it, but again, we're going to change up the words and we're going to insert all zoo animals. So this one will be, if you're a monkey and you know it, scratch your arms and see if you can do the movements with me. Are you ready? If you're a monkey and you know it, scratch your arms. If you're a monkey and you know it, scratch your arms. If you're a monkey and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're a monkey and you know it, scratch your arms. If you're an elephant and you know it, wave your trunk. If you're an elephant and you know it, wave your trunk. <coughs> you're an elephant and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're an elephant and you know it, wave your trunk. If you're a giraffe and you know it, stretch your neck. If you're a giraffe and you know it, stretch your neck. If you're a giraffe and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're a giraffe and you know it, stretch your neck. If you're an ostrich and you know it, hide your head. If you're an ostrich and you know it, hide your head. If you're an ostrich and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're an ostrich and you know it, hide your head. If you're a lion and you know it, give a roar. Roar! If you're a lion and you know it, let me roar. Roar! If you're a lion and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're a lion and you know it, hear me roar. Roar! If you're a snake and you know it, slither and hiss. If you're a snake and you know it, slither and hiss. If you're a snake and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're a snake and you know it, slither and hiss. If you're a brown bear and you know it, sleep and snore. If you're a brown bear and you know it, sleep and snore. If you're a brown bear and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a brown bear and you know it, sleep and snore. If you're a zebra and you know it, prance around. If you're a zebra and you know it, prance around. If you're a zebra and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a zebra and you know it, prance around. If you're a child and you know it, clap your hands. 
If you're a child and you know it, clap your hands. If you're a child and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're a child and you know it, clap your hands. Hooray! Great job, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to Storytime today. I want to remind you that the library is now open by appointment. So please be sure to stop in and see us. We'd love to see you. And come in and check out some of these really great books that we have about animals. Animals at the zoo, animals at the farm, animals in the wild. And then bring them home and share them with your child. I think that you will find that they really enjoy them. That's it for today. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.